Hey there, welcome back. My name is Simon. Now with many of the things that I play with and projects that I build for Home Assistant, I want to have a little touch screen that I can control and pull information back from Home Assistant. And I was looking for something really cost effective. So I came across this device. It's called the Cheap Yellow Display. And this thing sells anything from around $10 to about $16. So really, really cost effective. So let's have a look if we can get this working with Home Assistant. So I've printed a little 3D case for this. These files are freely available on the internet. And as you can see on the back side, it's got this little RGB LED. Uh, we've got our boot and reset buttons there. And on the front side, our screen is neatly displayed. And as you can see, we've got some little buttons that have been created over here. Now the resistive um, touch of this is not hugely sensitive. You do have to press reasonably hard. Um, if it was capacitive, I think it would be a lot more sensitive, but it certainly works well enough. We've got a 2.8 inch 240 by 320 TFT LCD screen. And then the driver is an ESP32, which is controlling everything. It also offers us Wi-Fi and Bluetooth connectivity. And this is a resistive touch screen. So having a close look at the back of the board, this one's got a type C port. Mine's actually got a micro USB. We've got a reset key just on the top cut there and a boot button on the bottom. We've got a battery interface so you can easily connect up a lithium cell this to this device. And it does have charging software in here or charging control, I believe. We've got a serial port, a UART serial port. We've got a micro SD card slot. We've got the ESP32 module itself. Then we've got an expansion pin. We've got a SPI peripheral interface as well as a speaker interface. Now, as you're all probably well aware, Coding is not my strong suite. So I've had a lot of help with this project of getting this device. And I want to shout out to a few people. First of all, Johnny Bergdahl, one of my faithful channel members, gave me a lot of advice on this device, as well as Tion Buerta, who sent me his code that he's created for using this to monitor his solar home production. And finally, Aaron from Make It Work. The code that I'm gonna be showing you today is all Aaron's code. So on Aaron's GitHub page, we're gonna go along to the ESP Home examples, and we're going to open up this one over here, and we're going to copy all of the code over here. Open up your Home Assistant, go to ESP Home Builder, create a new device, we'll call this CYD Demo. Next, we're going to skip the connection step. We're gonna select ESP32 as our processor, and we're going to skip again. So now what we do is we edit our CYD Demo and go along to the bottom here and paste in that piece of code. There we go. Now, there's a couple of things you need to do before you can get started uploading this code to the ESP32. The first thing is, you can see he's got it all written out here very neatly. Um, we need to copy the following items across to our secrets file. API key, OTA password, Wi-Fi SSD and password, and the AP password. Now, when you've opened up your new device in ESP Home Builder, you'll see that you can find all of those over here. So we've got our API, our OTA password, and our AP password. Generally, your Wi-Fi SSID and password would already be in your secrets. So we can save this. So in our secrets folder, we've currently got our web Wi-Fi SSID and password. And we're just going to add in the API key, the OTA password, and the AP password, just like this. Once you've done that, go along and save these. Now you're going to go back to your CYD demo, and now you can delete this up at the top here, like that. Next, what you need to do is copy the fonts. So there's a couple of fonts required for this. We need Arimo regular, and we need this one over here, 
the design material design icons. So Aaron has kindly put them in here for us. So all we do is we go back, we find the fonts over here, we download these two fonts onto our local drive, and then we go back into our Home Assistant, we go to our uh, file editor over there. Once in file editor, you wanna go along to the, uh, where is it, the ESP Home section, and then we want to upload those two fonts. So we click the upload button over here, we go file, we find the font, there it is, for example, the material design icon, we go okay, we open that, and we upload that. So you do the same for both of those two fonts. Once you've done that, you go back in again to your CYD demo, and from here, you just need to adjust the file paths for those two. So what you need to do is basically remove all of this and just have it without any of these other items over here. So just go and remove all of that. And finally, we'll go down here and there we go. So basically what they are finding is they're in the file path, which is the ESP Home file path. So the final step is to go and delete this code that is left over from the initial setup. We delete that, we save it, and then we're going to install. So I've just plugged the ESP32 CYD directly into my Home Assistant, and I'm going to press this button, and it will up, well, it install the code directly. So now that the flashing is complete, I've adopted it into Home Assistant. You can see here that we have control over the backlight, and then we have the 12 buttons that are displaying on the device. So you'll see here, if I press button one, it will go on, and the moment I release it, it goes off. So from here, we can easily now go and create automations. You can see I've created a small automation here, just when it detects that button one was turned on, it will toggle my kitchen light display. Now, if you did wanna go and edit the code, you can see over here that we have the different options. So for example, these are the actual icons. So you can see there we've got the mini palette icon, we've got the mini LED strip, the fan, the wall uh, sconce flat, for example. And up here, we've got the button colors. If we just scroll up a little bit here, we've got the different colors for the buttons. So you could easily go in here and start editing this code to create whatever you want your little touch screen buttons to look like. So overall, I was blown away by this little display, especially for the amount of money that you're paying for it. And there's so many different things that you could use this for. Please let me know in the comments below what you think you could use this device for. And once again, a big shout out to everyone that has helped me with this project. If you've enjoyed this video today, please like and subscribe, and I'd love to see you in the next one. Bye for now.